Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest of theCUBE, but a company that our audience should know pretty well. Uh, Giorgio Henny is the CTO of Scality. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to have me here, thank you. All right, so a lot of excitement, a lot of announcements, yeah. a lot going on here. Um, there's many shows that I go to uh, through the year. This is the only one I asked to go to in Las Vegas, um, and definitely uh, you know, highlight of the year, great one to, you know, I'm excited to end my travel for the year after this one. Uh, how's your experience been this week? So, so far the experience has been great. A lot of people, uh, people know about storage, they know about the uh, object space, so very, very good show. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about you know object, I mean cloud and object go together. You know, I worked for you know a very large you know storage company that did object storage probably a little too early, yeah. um, and object storage was something that you know we understand the value of it yeah. in the industry, uh, but we don't talk about objects as much anymore. And even Scality doesn't necessarily call it out uh, as objects kind of in your front messaging when I hear from you guys. Um, but you know, why is it important now? What's going on in the storage world? Yeah, so for a very long time, there wasn't a standard interface to interact with objects. And now with the S3 protocol, we think it's a de facto standard. And so you see a lot more adoption of object because with one protocol, you can connect multiple applications, multiple backends. So it goes well with a multi-cloud strategy. All right, and draw, con connect the dots for us as yeah. to, you know, I understand S3 in the cloud, but you know, how does that fit into your solution? How does that work? Yeah, so we think that the enterprise is going to use multiple cloud. So sometimes it makes sense to go to the public cloud, sometimes it makes more sense to go on-prem. But as long as the security, the users, the protocol are the same, we can move from one to another seamlessly. All right, moving data is tough. Yeah. Um, and where data lives, you know, how it's close to compute, yeah. uh, you know, applications, you know, I, I've been saying, you know, follow the data, follow the applications, yeah. uh, you know, you're going to find a lot about what's going yeah. on. What do you see in the world of data? What are you hearing from your customers? Yeah, so you know there's a, a lot of dev tests going on with DevOps system, so it makes sense to do your testing in the cloud, uh, studying VMs, doing some continuous integration tests in the cloud, and so you're going to use S3, you're going to use all the Amazon tools, when you go live on-prem, uh, I think the same protocol make it so that your test environment is the same than the production environment. And so that's why we implement the cloud APIs, like AWS S3, so that it's a seamless going from test to production. All right, so I, you know, we, we've heard from customers for years, there, there's been this disconnect. Yeah. Uh, and they, they talked about it in the keynote, it's like there's door number one, like their example was VMware, and door yeah. number two was AWS. And they said, well, we can put VMware you know, available you know, on AWS. So you're saying, once again, I could start S3 in the cloud and I can have a fully S3 API compatible uh, so solution, you know, in my data center yes. or my hosting provider yep. or wherever that happens to live, right? Yeah, exactly. And one of the key is something we announced uh, earlier this week, is we've released our Active Directory integration, which is the same as what Amazon does with IAM, Identity and Access Management. So you can have the same users in the cloud than in your data center. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's great when Amazon came out with that kind of, yeah. you know, in many ways we've had Active Directory for Microsoft and understand how that works in yeah. kind of the Azure world. Um, yeah, you know, how do, how do customers think of that kind of multi-cloud environment and actually, yeah. you know, the, the identity is a huge yeah. issue there. So that's fascinating, that's a, that's a big requirement when you talk to our customers, you want to have multiple clouds, is they want to be able to manage all the, user, all the users from one location. So if somebody leaves a company, I want to kill the account from one location, and it propagates everywhere. All right. So, yeah, please. Yeah, one of the ways to one of the way to do that is to all integrate with the same Active Directory server. So you can use tools like Ping Federate, ADFS to connect to AD, and we've done it, uh, meaning that every user in our system is centrally managed from uh, the IT portal. All right. So, so this is the part of the interview where you get to explain the fox on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to explain it. So this is our new open source product called VSP Server. Uh, we decided to use a fox as the logo after a long discussion because it's a clever animal. So that's a clever way to use S3. Um, well, uh, I will talk about this product. So this product is a way for anybody to start their own S3 service anywhere. So it could be on your laptop. As a developer, you're on a plane, you want to code against S3, you do your own. 
Uh, it could be if you want to send out a, an instance for testing, just send an on-prem instance very quickly, no need to go to the cloud to do your test, a low latency. Or if you want to go in production, you can send it over the scalability wing and get two petabytes scale of storage, all with the same code base. Yeah, so, so Giorgio, you know, you've got the CTO hat on. Yeah. There's so much going on in this space. You know, machine learning, yeah. the IOT, uh, you got the, the AI uh, stuff coming yeah. up. Um, which of those are kind of bubbling into your world? H how does it, it kind of influence your roadmap and the conversation you're having with customers? Yeah, so actually uh, IOT is something that's uh, growing in size. Uh, we have signed Renault, which is a, you know, a car manufacturer in Europe, and they are using us to store um, self-driving cars data. Because these cars generate a lot of data, video mostly, and they need petabytes of storage to store that. So we see a lot of IoT coming in. Uh, of course, video is still big for us, uh, but uh, smart sensors are generating a lot of content. All right, uh, you guys have a booth here on the show floor, yes. correct? Talk to us about you know, what are conversations you're having with customers, you know, what's kind of the, the moment that they kind of get you know, where, where you fit into what they're looking at, what's drawing them to you? Yeah. So our booth is booth 420. Um, so far, there's a lot of developers coming and they love the fact that they can start their own SP very quickly on their own machine. So that's been working pretty well. Uh, and then we see people who uh, have a pillar of data, um, maybe on NAS, and they want to put everything into one single pool of storage. And uh, since we support both file and object, we allow people to transition to the object technology much more easily because we can do file. This is what gets there. Okay, so, so does Scality have any solutions that ride around on a truck? <laughs> so this is impressive. I've seen the truck, but this is, uh, this is huge. Now we, we don't know how to move petabytes. Train maybe is an even better idea. I mean, it, it's 100 petabytes. Yes. And you talk about it's got a terabit of, of networking capability yeah. because it, as we said, you know, data, it's got that gravity. It's, it's really Absolutely. tough to move. Um, yeah, what are your customers, I mean, you, you talked about being able to move, how much data do you see customers moving? Is it just kind of, in you know, certain instances, what is, how does mobility yeah. and portability fit into your so customer actually environment? actually we see, we uh, start to look at a new trend, which I think is very interesting, which is using the cloud for the features that are in the cloud, but not for long-term storage. So to give you an example, on Amazon you can do Elastic Map Reduce, which is a good way to do data mining. So what about if you just move to the cloud, the subset of data you need for data mining, and kill it when you're done. And this way you keep your data on-prem and just send a little bit to the cloud. So you're not sending petabytes, you're sending just what you need. All right, why don't you give you the opportunity, you know, key takeaways you have for the show, uh, where, where people can find out more, you know, what, what you're excited yeah, about going forward. So I think there's a lot of announcement on metadata and uh, we agree that it's a very important topic. So there's a, a Redshift, there's all these new databases. You can now search in S3 with Athena, so we're going to look into that. And so we invest in metadata as well, because that's the way to know what your data is, uh, to select your old data, to move the data somewhere else. So I think that's very important. Uh, and uh, number two, if you want to try out our new open source interface, go to s3.skt.com. And uh, it's open source, it's running on Docker, easy to start with, yeah, go it's, for it's it. Kind of, where's, where's it on GitHub? Uh, you go to s3.skt.com and okay. you get all the information. It, it, it you get yeah. the redirect also. All right, really appreciate you coming and share yeah. all, all the updates. Uh, look, look forward to catching up with you guys at, at, at many more events. We're getting close to the end of our coverage of AWS reInvent 2016. Stay with us, you're watching theCUBE.